everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Friday, TGIF. You made it through another week. And yes, you, as you can see, we're upstate. We just had a mow the lawn. I uh, did a few things up here, enjoying a beautiful, cool day up here. And it's 10 or 15 degrees hotter in the city, so it's always nice to come up here where you can breathe. Fresh air, good oxygen, unlike where I live at home. <laughs> anyway, we got a couple things to get to today. Let's get started right okay, away. Okay, we're back home, back down the shop. Let's see what project we have ready for today. Now, a while back, I bought this lot of tools on eBay. It was uh, I paid $44 shipped to my house for these and for some screwdrivers. Now, believe it or not, I bid on this just for a couple items because, you know, obviously I have a lot of uh, tin snips. I have a lot of chisels, things like that. But these are in good shape, you know. They just need a little cleaning up and they're always fun to do. But uh, one of the items I wanted was this crowbar because this is a round crowbar. You rarely see round crowbars. And this one's in beautiful condition. It just needs to be cleaned up. Uh, I love a round crowbar. I have a nice one that's titanium. But uh, what I really bid on this lot for was for the next items I'm going to show. It's because of these items that I bid on that lot. You know, the rest of them really don't mean much to me. But uh, these are the ones that I wanted. And first of all, this this beauty here was the this is the the gem of the lot to me. Look at this beautiful heavy duty square shank screwdriver and look at the ferrule on that thing huh it's got some kind of markings on here the woods and decent i mean that's just beautiful so we have that one we have uh this one here is a, a nice one uh, this one here is a hexagon shaft okay and uh very interesting heavy duty looks uh looks american but these three here i didn't even know i think they're part of now the set. reason i say that is because look they all have that same type of handle this kind of oval shaped handle and uh this one here looks like a tire spoon of some sort but it's not really too thin in the bottom but it's some kind of pry bar very interesting right i don't know if this was a uh, wedged in here after look at that the way it's in there i don't know I don't know if it's a handle. Anyway, that one there. Uh, this one here is a, a square shafted. Uh, looks like some kind of a punch of some sort. Don't know. But this is what I wanted. Again, I was on the screwdriver kick. Look at this screwdriver. Again, with that very interesting ferrule. Double stepped and with a groove in there. Uh, this is totally interesting to me. It's got this, you see how it's swaged here, here, and here? So that if you were going to put a wrench on it, you could put the wrench here, then you could put the wrench here, back over here. Do you see how that works? Ah, oh, look at this. It's lovely. And again, this is an oct octagonal uh, part from here down. Just a beautiful, and look at that handle. I mean, it needs a little work, a little bit of a crack here, but just beautiful. I, so that's what I bid on those. So for today's project, I I didn't know which one I wanted to do, but I don't know. Maybe we could squeeze two of these out. And uh, they just are so unusual, so attractive. Again, here, and let's see if we could make out this name here and better lighting here. Um, here, you can see that here. I use sometimes on camera, this shows up much better than what I could see. So... I don't know if you can make that out there, but it definitely, uh, do I see Hinger or Singer or something? We'll look at that. And uh, I don't know if there's any name on here, but there's obviously some paint on here. So let's try this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, scrape this off, scrape this paint off with a razor blade and also the handles. Let's get to that. Okay, here we are on a post wire brush. We do this just to make sure if there's any names or anything that might get lost later on uh, in the cleanup here. You could see we, I was able to, can you see that? You'll, I know you'll be able to see it better on screen, especially if I blow it up, but I have a magnifying glass. Can you see what that says? It's in Michigan, it was made. I cannot make out the name of uh, what that is, but I'm sure you will be able to see it later on because uh, I can't see nothing. And the patent number is there. Again, using the magnifying glass. And, uh, okay. But you can see, uh, 
it's again beautiful this one's just absolutely beautiful this one here somebody took the time to put their initials on it right lv they took the time so this had to be a prized possession or not a cheap screwdriver and it was the tips on both of these screwdrivers are pristine you know except for being old so they weren't ground down they were just they're beautiful right they just have to be cleaned up so let's scrape down the handle let's get to it Now, when doing octagonal or hexagon shapes or anything that's unusual, I like to skip one, keep going around. You see, I did four, skipping the ones in between, because now when you come back, it gives you a nice clean line. If you go from one to the other, you could, you know, you could start changing the shape. So I like to go every other one, then finish off down. You see the difference here? Then finish off down the right between the lines so you you know you keep that crisp and sharp also i'll scrape the handles after all this is done because inevitably you'll be touching this and get it dirty so you, you leave the handles to last now i do the same thing on square shank I, I it's because if you go from one to the other you have a chance of rolling this edge over and you don't want to roll you want to keep that edge see how sharp that edge is that's exactly what you want when you finish you want this to be very sharp and then you go over it lightly and create that little bevel on there so that you don't uh, you know it's not uncomfortable but you see here that's just with the flap disc and you see the forging and the flap okay and then we'll just finish up here and that'll create a very sharp edge. Okay, uh, reading through the comments of the last video, you say you like a little chit chat. Well, I'm gonna give you a little chit chat today, okay? Let me just tell you what happened to me. You know, I was doing those screwdrivers, everything's going good, and uh, you know, we have this Hurricane Ida supposed to come by, you know, the one that pelted Louisiana. Now they said we might get some heavy rains and things like that, so you know, remember last week when they said we were gonna get this crazy wind and stuff? Thank God we didn't get the wind, but we were gonna get some heavy rains, and, and okay, but you know, again, <laughs> They were wrong. We didn't just get rain. We got torrential rain, especially in my neighborhood. And uh, we got like four inches in and out. It was just insane. So I'm doing the screwdrivers over there, right? And the next thing I know, my feet are wet. <laughs> I look down and there's like a half an inch of water on them. I said, what the heck? And, uh, you know, my, my basement knock on wood is uh is pretty dry you know it's a hundred and something year old house you're always going to have a leak here and there but it's pretty dry and uh now it was leaking like a porous boat it was leaking everywhere and there was water that i haven't seen since i was a kid anyway uh needless to say it was it was coming in so fast that it filled up the sewer and then the sewer wasn't going down so i guess the sewers were full too and so now i got the sewer you know where your little, uh, the hole where your sewer is, was filling up fast. And if that thing overfills, then my whole basement gets filled up. So I rush, and I remember years ago, I bought this Harbor Freight uh, sump pump, just in case I was going to, I was, at, I had plans of, you know, making a little hole and, and putting that sump pump in. And I said, I got to work this because this thing's flowing up. I only had like three inches before it got to the top and it's coming in, it's, it's coming in like crazy so I quick I open it up and I don't have the proper hose that'll fit on the nozzle of that, <laughs> that sump pump but I got I said you know what I had to sacrifice a brand new garden hose I only bought like a a couple not even a, a couple months ago I had to cut it and uh and splice it it still wasn't the right size but I spliced it taped it and I got it to work threw it into the sewer trap 
And uh, and then I hooked it up, and, and thank God I was able to keep the water from flooding the entire basement. But I had to sit down here for a couple hours and nurse it because every time it got high, I had to turn the pump on, let it go down. It's got to float, but you can't trust them, you know? You have to be here when it's filling up that fast. So anyway, let me show you some of the damage. Now here you can see the flow of water coming. You see it by my foot over here? That's the flow of water coming from outside through the wall. And then over here, obviously we're back with this thing, the electrical box, but it was gushing out before, filled up the trap. It's all over you the base. You can see here there's water all over, over the here. Base. By my lay in the front under the furnace. <laughs> Good news is I got these drying So up the there. reason I'm bringing this up is just to let you know that, uh, you know, when things happen, you know, this is part of life and you you have to put things in perspective. You know what I mean? And, and you know, nobody likes to have damage or like this and, and you know, water damage and, and standing in an inch of water in your basement. But, you know, things happen. You have to uh, take it in stride. And, you know, I feel bad. Daniel, he had... Uh, he had a ton of, uh, they said 170 mile an hour winds over by where he was, just insane in Louisiana. So our prayers go out to them, but you know, uh, this is what you deal with. That's why being a homeowner is always rough when you get bad weather. And the show must go on. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what these two screwdrivers look like before we started. And we're calling this project done. And I have to tell you, you know I have a lot of screwdrivers, and these two mean a lot to me. And it was my Hurricane Ida <laughs> screwdrivers that I had to rush to get finished. But look how beautiful these are. Let's take them one at a time, starting off with this beautiful... Now, when I saw this, I thought that this was factory-made like this. I thought that... I said, what a great idea. You know, you put the wrench on there, and you could turn it instead of trying to get on these little flats here was just ingenious but as I was looking more at it and restoring it I realized I think this was done by hand by our man over here I left his initials in LV you see here LV now whoever did that took the time and you know how hard it is to put these punches in in such a perfect line this guy was a perfectionist he loved this screwdriver and it showed look at that look at what a beautiful screwdriver this is so uh, I think he did this with a file, and uh, and it's just phenomenal. And look at the handle. Let's take a look at the handle. Look at that. Look at that grain. It was all black. That was tough to get out, but isn't that nice? And, and the ferrule. Just, this is beautiful. Now, if this ain't beautiful enough, look at this one. If I sound a little excited, I am, because I really didn't expect them to come out. Like, look at, first let's look at the wood grain on here, okay? Can we appreciate that wood grain on there? I mean, and it was a shame because this too was in, covered in black. And and look at that beautiful ferrule. And I was able to get the name off here or, you know, bring it back a little bit. But I just don't know what it is or, or who it is. I tried looking it up. Even that patent number I couldn't find anything for. So maybe somebody out there will know. But look at that beautiful ferrule on there. And... And look at it now. Is that just fabulous? And again, remember we were talking about getting the flats on here. Sorry. Remember I was talking about getting the flats, that it has to be smooth in your hand and the touch. And, you know, and, and how nice that this one was, you know, not mangled or anything. This is just a beautiful screwdriver. Yeah, if I sound excited, these are just absolutely phenomenal and well worth the money for the entire lot that I bought, it's worth it just for these two screwdrivers. Don't you think, aren't they gorgeous? Okay, so uh, as you know, it's the next day and uh, we did finish up the project. I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, that was a rough one. Hurricane Ida, most rainfall dumped here uh, ever in history is that they've been recording. And it was, uh, yeah, I, I went walking last night after everything was done and, and said with, and, it, and the water actually moved cars. It, uh, I saw cars all crooked in the street. I'm like, why would they park? It was because the water did it, and there was rocks. You know my gravel driveway? It washed about 40 pounds of gravel into the street. It was just a mate, the power of uh, torrential rains. You know, we've never seen anything like it here. Lots of cars underwater. <laughs> it was amazing. Like I said, uh, 
I'm 90% dried out down here now, you know, and, and I remember as a kid, we used to get floods like, you know, sometimes in the, in the basement like that. But yesterday was a rough one and uh, I'm glad it's over. I, I can't stand heavy rains and, and high winds, you know, two things that you hate as a homeowner. But anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you very much, everybody, especially uh, my friends Stuart and Lee from uh, Australia, who uh, made sure last night after watching the news to uh, to check out and see how it was doing because you know, they saw on the news how bad New York was. But and, and Australia, with everything Australia they're going through, they were worried about me. It made me feel really good. Anyway, hope you have a fantastic day, a great weekend. And isn't it funny how... After a storm, everything comes clear and the skies are blue. It's always like that, right? After a big storm, the next day is usually really nice and something. But so I've been enjoying some good weather today. Take care now. Enjoy your weekend. Have a great Labor Day. We'll see you again on Monday. Take care. Bye-bye.